Have you avoided heavy weightlifting because you thought it was just for bodybuilders or powerlifters? Well, you might want to think again. Today, we'll uncover why mostly everyone, including you, should be incorporating some heavy resistance training into your exercise routine. And this isn't just about building muscle. It's about maintaining it as we age ensuring that we have the function to continue to do the things that bring us joy in life, whether it's taking a walk in the park, having a kick about with the lads, or playing rough and tumble with the kids. So stick around and let's jump into this topic together. Welcome back, and if you're new to this channel, my name is Zib, and it's one of my key purposes in life to help others optimize their health and well-being. And today's topic is of vital importance. And you might be thinking, hang on a second, I go running, I do yoga, isn't that enough? Well, it might not be. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest that incorporating strength training could be the thing that you're missing. So, why heavy resistance training? Well, let's start off with talking about our muscles and aging. Did you know that when we reach the age of 30, we can lose between three and 8% of our total muscle mass every decade? And by the time we hit 50 or 60, that could be up to 10% of our total muscle mass lost every single decade. And it also seems as though this isn't just a continuous linear decline, but occurs in more of a stepwise fashion in accordance with periods of sustained inactivity in our life as we get older. The key here is use it or lose it. And if we don't use our muscles effectively, we don't give them the signals they need to maintain their mass and strength and so they just allow themselves to be broken down. A good example of this is if you've ever seen somebody with a leg or an arm in a cast. And when the cast gets removed a month or two months later, the muscle on that side is significantly smaller. It's because it's atrophy. The muscle size has decreased because it simply hasn't been used. And there have been some really clever experiments that have shown this impact occurs even in just a short period of time, like a week or two weeks. Experiments have put someone's leg or arm in a cast and measured the muscle fiber diameter over a period of time. And you can see that even just after a short period of inactivity, the muscle fiber size has decreased significantly. Now, as we get older and things happen in life, we may then find that we're not exercising as much as we used to. And we go through longer periods of inactivity not using those muscles. And it's during those long periods that the muscle strength and size deteriorate significantly. But there is good news. We can combat this decline in muscle mass, known as sarcopenia, effectively with heavy resistance training. And other forms of exercise do have significant benefits on longevity, but it's this heavy resistance or strength training that has the optimum benefits on maintaining our muscle mass and strength. And if we look a little bit into the muscle fibers, we can see how this happens. Now, to get a little bit scientific, there are broadly speaking two main groups of muscle fibers. It's actually a fair bit more nuanced than this, but for the purposes of the day, let's go for the two broad groups. And that's fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. And the fast twitch muscle fibers, which are vital for speed, strength, and power, are the ones that tend to deteriorate most rapidly as we age. On the other hand, slow twitch muscle fibers, which are vital for endurance, don't tend to deteriorate as rapidly as we age. And this is why stimulating those fast twitch muscle fibers with some resistance or strength training is vital to preserve their mass and strength. And the heaviness of the weight being lifted is an important factor because our nervous system recruits the muscle fibers in a specific manner. When we lift a lighter weight, we're primarily using those slow twitch muscle fibers. But to engage the fast twitch muscle fibers, we need to use a heavier weight. And you can think of it like this. With a lighter weight, less muscle fibers are needed, and predominantly more so of the slow twitch muscle fibers. As the weight gets heavier and heavier, more fibers are needed, more power is needed, so the nervous signal signals for those fast twitch muscle fibers to move that heavy weight. So, how can we incorporate heavy resistance training into our routine? Well, here's a few tips for you. You wanna start off with the resistance or weight that you can move safely for between four to eight reps. And the key here is on safely, going within what is within your capacity. And this is because the term that we've been using here, heavy, 
is a very subjective one. We're not talking about someone else's heavy, we're talking about your heavy. What feels heavy for you may not be for someone else. And a useful way to picture this is using the RPE scale, Rating of Perceived Exertion. We look at a range between one being very easy, up to 10 being extremely challenging. And for the kind of heavy resistance training, strength training that we're talking about here, you'd be wanting to pick a weight that is between an eight or nine on that scale. So it's pretty challenging for you, but you need to be able to move it safely. And then comes the choice of exercise, where there's quite a big difference depending on your existing experience level with any kind of resistance training. Ideally, you'd want to be doing the bigger compound move lifts. Things like squats, deadlifts are great for hinge hipping, which has been shown to have a really big impact on longevity. And then some pressing movements, like a bench press or an overhead press, and then some pulling movements too, like a pull up or a bent over row. Big compound movements that train those large muscle groups and also stimulate the smaller stabilizing muscles too. But this choice of exercise really does depend heavily on your experience and your entry level strength. And it might be that to begin with, all you're able to do is a few partial body weight squats while holding a chair or someone's arm for a bit of support. And that's great because it's about what's heavy for you. And just remember, it needs to be on your own terms and everyone needs to start from somewhere. And don't worry about making you too bulky either. This is about strength rather than size. Now, whilst an increase in muscle size does usually bring an increase in strength, the opposite isn't always true, and particularly so for ladies. So please don't neglect strength training because you're worried about becoming overly muscular, ladies. And an interesting point for the ladies is that resistance training seems to do a lot more than simply help us build strong muscles. In fact, research has shown that engaging in resistance or strength training two or three times a week reduces risk of death from heart disease and decreases risk of death from any cause in women. Now, in terms of how much we should do, most research seems to suggest the optimal point for strength and resistance training is between 30 and 60 minutes every week. And this may be split into two or three sessions. And as we discussed earlier, between four to eight reps is the optimal range. And between three and five working sets per exercise seems to give the best benefits. And splitting your week equally between upper body and lower body, choosing those compound exercises if possible. So the lower body, things like squats, deadlifts, leg press, and for the upper body, things like bench press, overhead press, and pull-ups, weighted if necessary. However, if you're completely new to exercise, you could get started by doing some simple body weight squats onto a chair. So set the chair up behind you, and then you just sit down onto the chair, stand back up again, sit down, stand up. Having another chair by the side if necessary, so you can hold onto it for a bit of extra support. You could do some pressing by doing push-ups on the floor, but balancing on your knees rather than your feet to take some of that load away. And you could buy a simple resistance band, hang it over a door and use it to do some pull downs. And all of this you could do at home easily, relatively inexpensively too, which can just help you start to build some of that baseline strength. And once you've got started, one of the things to bear in mind is that you do want to be progressive about what you're doing. And this doesn't mean that you need to be increasing things every single week, but you do need to be pushing yourself so that you can consistently increase your strength over time and allowing for a deload week every so often to increase that rest and recovery. So now that we've looked into how to do it, the key question is, why is this important? Well, it's because heavy resistance training is not only important to ensure we maintain our muscle mass, it's also vital to maintain our strength as we age, which ensures that we can live a quality life with optimal physical function, using our bodies in the way that they were designed to be. In addition to that, it also has powerful effects on our longevity. And this is because increased strength decreases our risk of frailty and decreases our risk of falling, both of which are associated with an early death. 
In fact, as we get older, if we experience a heavy fall, there's a 9.6% increased risk of mortality in the first month and a 33% increased risk of mortality in the year after that fall. And frailty is not only linked with a risk of early death, but it's also heavily linked with our ability to function effectively in life. And I know I want to be running around playing with my grandkids when they're born, and I'm sure many of you want the same too. So in conclusion, regular strength training is a fantastic way to limit the aging of our muscles. I would be remiss not to say that cardio also plays a key role in our ability to function and ensure our muscles age well, but that's a discussion for another time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe below. We release daily videos on health and wellbeing optimization.